sphere itself, Eater, explored in detail. Fans of the horror film genre could not be happier when celebrated filmmaker and screenwriter Mick Garris came back with another intriguing horror anthology series post creating the Showtime series Masters of Horror. We are talking about the American Horror Suspense Anthology television series Fear Itself, which was aired on NBC back in June 2008. All it took for this series was just one season, 13 thrilling episodes to be more specific, for it to create a following for itself. Gifted television actors and writers who could whip up tales in just about 45 minutes. An enthusiastic bunch of directors who were amazing with low budgets spun together a compelling yarn. Well, coming back to today's video, we will be exploring the fifth episode, Eater, in great detail. Directed by the late horror veteran Stuart Gordon and spectacular screenplay by Richard Chismar and Jonathan Sheck. Eater is irrefutably a terrifying piece of entertainment, and all thanks to Gordon for that. Please note that today's video is going to be an interesting, in-depth explanation of the episode, which is based on Peter Crother's short story also titled Eater. So do not hesitate to leave your thoughts about it in the comments section. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Okay, let's do this then. Eat it. Nothing is as it seems. The episode explained in detail. It is snowing, and the audience gets to see two police officers dragging a chained man out of the police van. One can't really make out the face of the prisoner. He has long hair and most of his face is hidden behind those hair strands. He is taken inside the police station, where the officers are literally stunned to see him and his gigantic size. Some even address him as the serial killer. Amongst the officers, there is a blonde female officer who watches the prisoner while he is being taken upstairs. The man is eventually led inside a holding cell and his shackles are removed. The sergeant begins by asking him questions. He initially nods his answers, but when he's asked if he has any questions or concerns, the man breaks into a sinister laughter. This disturbs the officers, and they leave him alone, locked inside the room. The man takes out some kind of talisman from under his sleeves, shakes it, and starts chanting, Zuzu, Zuzu, Ziza, Kendui, Miare. We get a close-up of his rotten teeth and are taken to the opening credits of the series. Next, the sergeant is seen taking the attendance of his officers, and that's when we are introduced to the blonde female cop, Danny Bannerman, who has only completed three months at the station. Clearly, it has not been easy for Bannerman, as her colleagues don't fancy her at all. They are visibly not okay having a chick watching their backs, but Sergeant Williams is all game for Team Bannerman. The sergeant assigns work to his officers, and before leaving them tells them about about their special overnight guest, Dwayne Eater Meller. Over the last two years, Meller has butchered around 32 people in about five different states. Over the last two years, Meller has killed over 30 people in five different states. In every case, he has taken his victims home, killed the males straight away, but kept the females alive for weeks, initially playing with them, then tormenting them, and ultimately eating them. This piece of information startles everyone. We learn that Meller is there at the station for the night only, to be taken by the feds the next morning. Officers Marty Steinwitz, Matingley, and Bannerman are assigned to the task of holding the fort. When Bannerman becomes curious to know more about the eater, the sergeant tells them how he would slice a bit of meat from the bodies of his victims, throw it into a frying pan to satiate his occasional hunger pangs. That's not all. His intestines and other body parts were wrapped up in plastic bags and kept inside the fridge to make his custom-made skin closet, apparently taken while the victims were still alive. This information about the eater turns out to be quite appalling. Bannerman takes the eater's report from the sergeant and begins to read it before he leaves. Parallel, the eater is shown to be chanting from inside his holding cell whilst moving back and forth. We are taken to a flashback. The eater is seen casually cutting off the tongue of a horrified female victim, tossing it on a frying pan 
and then relishing it. And of course, Bannerman is utterly disgusted by what she has read so far. Very quickly, a crash is heard and the lights are seen to flicker. Bannerman heads upstairs to find Marty hungrily eating a pizza. When she asks him about the crash, he tells her that he has heard nothing, with Marty taking a giant bite of the pizza. Bannerman, for a split second, sees a human eyeball on his slice. Marty offers her a slice, but Bannerman refuses. The duo starts discussing about the serial killer, that he is a Cajun, and how he actually made lampshades out of human skin and bowls out of human skulls. Bannerman makes her way towards the holding cell. Melor is seen resting, wrapped in some kind of a black cloak. Marty startles her from behind with some coffee for her. The officers start talking amongst themselves, and Marty tells Bannerman about an old voodoo saying which says, if you cut a man's heart out and then you eat it before it stops beating, not only do you gain his strength, but you also gain his spirit. With the sudden sound being heard, Marty tells her to wait upstairs and goes down to investigate. A little later, Bannerman takes the keys of the cell and attempts to open it, to only find it already open. Next, Meller is seen letting out a roar and trying to grab her, but Bannerman starts to imagine things. Meller is seen lying like he was underneath his blanket. Matingly intervenes and tells her to stop being such a woman. Bannerman starts laughing and tells him that he and Marty are doing things on purpose and just trying to mess with her head. Matingly is least amused with her conclusion and asks her if she wants another cup of coffee. Bannerman does not say anything and faces toward the cell. Matingly asks her for the second time, only this time it appears to be Marty asking her. Bannerman looks around everywhere trying to locate Marty, but Matingly tells her that it was him who asked her if she wanted coffee. He can't figure out what's wrong with Bannerman and attempts to advance on her, but the latter ducks her and goes to find Marty, but he is nowhere to be found. The front gate is seen to be locked from the outside and all communication devices have stopped working. She takes out her cell phone and is terrified to hear Meller chanting. Petrified, she drops her phone down and discovers the lifeless body of Matingly staring blankly at her with his heart ripped out. Not knowing what to do, she runs toward the locked front gate only to hear another crashing upstairs. She starts running hysterically and bumps into the sergeant who has just come back to the station. Bannerman fills him in saying that the eater is out and loose in the station. She tells him that Meller has killed Matingly. It is currently disguised as Marty. Of course, the sergeant is bewildered by her statement and Bannerman tries her best to make him believe her. The duo head upstairs to check things out and are shocked to find the dead corpse of Marty hanging from the ceiling. His heart's ripped out as well. They see another body inside the room, one whose face is covered. The sergeant asks Bannerman to check his face and to the latter's horror, the dead body is revealed to be that of the sergeant. His heart ripped out as well. Bannerman turns back and tries shooting at the eater, now disguised as the sergeant, but he shows her the bullets of her gun, which she had unloaded before. A chase between the duo follows with the eater letting out a wicked laughter. Bannerman goes back to the locker room and tries opening the back door, but to no avail. Bannerman hides behind a locker when she hears someone approaching towards her. She's fast enough to disable the person for the time being, but it is revealed to be Marty. But Bannerman knows it's not him. She calls him as the damn eater. Marty agrees. His teeth start rotting up and he manages to pin Bannerman down to eat her heart out. A struggle ensues and Bannerman is barely able to run away from him. Matingly appears from nowhere, but Bannerman is able to evade him. She reaches the front door, but turns back towards Matingly telling him that she just can't let him go. The eater, disguised as Matingly, morphs back to his original self and bites off Bannerman's ear. Screaming in pain, she manages to headbutt him and gets away. She enters inside what looks like some kind of a supply closet and the audience gets to see a couple of rat poison packs there. Meanwhile, the eater is literally tired of Bannerman. He does not want to play any more games with her. He frantically looks for her and sees a trail of blood leading towards the supply closet. He laughs and opens the door dragging a whimpering Bannerman out. He hits her and tells her, time to eat. And we can see her getting eaten by the eater. Bannerman screams, but does not really fight back and somehow, she manages to handcuff the eater to her. Suddenly, Melor is seen gagging. The flashback scene shows Bannerman rubbing rat poison around her neck first, and also forcefully consuming a good quantity of the powder. The eater realizes he is poisoned and starts foaming at the mouth saying, You bitch! You killed me! You killed me! You killed me! He falls on the floor and gags himself to death beside an already dead Bannerman. <laughs> Ah! 
Want to know what we think? What we have here is a product of Stuart Gordon, and we all know how Gordon has never really shied away from all things gore. With Eater, it goes without saying that he has done a marvelous job. Well, of course, we have the screenplay duo Chismar and Sheck to give due credits to, but to be honest, Gordon knew exactly what his role as the director was. But if we are really talking about the high points of the episode, the main award goes to the one and only Stephen R. Hart for his spectacular portrayal of The Eater. He is the definition of creepy, and is nobody fitting enough to play the role of Dwayne Eater Melor. Next, we possibly cannot disregard Elizabeth Moss's portrayal of the rookie cop Annerman. She is and natural, and her performance is convincing. Eater also delivers a solid performance from the rest of the supporting cast, Russell Hornsby, Pablo Schreiber, and the late Stephen Lee. We at Marvelous Videos believe that it would not be wrong to address Eater as one of the strongest standalone episodes of Fear itself. If you still have not seen it, we highly recommend that you do so at your earliest. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Ah! Ah! Ah!